thought you've got there? Oh, Mills was dictating into it when he was shot. Uh, you want to hear a murder? The tainted talents of Dr. Herman Deal and uh, Professor Meisner are alike in every... There it is. Complete with the murderer's rubber heel getaway. Because the footsteps are soft? That's right. You know, I've listened to this thing over 40 times, and I can't help feeling that somewhere in there, the murderer left his signature. Pretty illegible up to now. Let's have another look in his office. Well, Herb, nothing's changed. If he was at his desk, the shots came from where? No, about that. Why, Al, come on in. Al? Anything new? I haven't talked to Steve since I saw you with Herb. What do you think, Herb? My hunch is he didn't do it. Hunch? Crystal balls, Ouija boards, everything but solid evidence. Who found the body? The cleaning crew, but nobody heard the shot. Steve notes? Yeah. Hilton and her father were home all night, but they can't prove it except by each other. I'd like to talk to them. So would I. Well, go ahead. Why don't you? I'll stay here. We've been over this room a dozen times. I haven't been able to prove anything, so I'm going to go over it again. Okay. Hi, Lieutenant. Hi, Abram. In case you can't guess it, we're talking about Mills. Oh, charming fellow. He was, in his own way, knew what he wanted, knew how to get it. And it got him killed. That can happen to anybody. Al Bingham had that column first, you know. Poor old Al, chugging along with honesty and integrity. The readers couldn't have cared less. Then Mills took it away from him, and in three years it was selling papers coast to coast. As I remember, you were a cog in that wheel. Well, you bet I was. Mills gave, Mills gave me my first job, you know. Secretary. As a matter of fact, I never quite got over working for him. I was feeding him items right up to yesterday. Did it bother you what he did with those stories? Some, but let's face it, fellas. It wasn't the professor's story that caused that trouble. It was the professor's daughter. The feminine angle? My specialty. Excuse me, gotta run. Thanks, Herbert. You know, it completely slipped my mind that Al used to write that column. Mine, too. It's so different now. Supposed to meet Al at headquarters. When he found out I had a record of the murder, he couldn't wait to hear. What was that? When Al found out that I had a record of the murder, he couldn't wait to hear it. He knew about that record. No, he couldn't have heard. I just told him about it two John, minutes ago. When we were talking to Professor Meisner, he knew about that record. He did? He knew that Mills was dictating when he was shot. Oh, no. Shoes. What is this? Well, you're an old hand. You don't want me to draw you a picture, do you? I'm not okay. The session of questions and answers was short but grueling. An hour later, Weston had Al Bingham's detailed confession in his hand. Why? Herb, of all the people in the world, why Al Bingham? He's been the first man on more murder scenes than I have. He knows better. What did Al say about the gun? It was a little Belgian job, like we figured. A war souvenir. It's probably in the bottom of the river somewhere. Funny he'd make a slip like that about that recording. Well, I can see that. Uh, but I take a dim view of detectives missing that piece of mud from the bottom of his shoe the first time. John... Just between you and me, do you think that he really... That's beside the point, Herb. Look, I've got no choice. Al's confession checks against every known fact in the case. But... But what? But Al Bingham has been around too long. He's seen too much. He's much too intelligent to commit murder. Ah, uh, pure sentiment, Herb. John, if you were going to rig evidence and make it stick, what would you say would be the prime requisites? Uh, be on the scene and be smart. 
such as certain policemen, certain killers, perhaps, or uh, a hard-working reporter? Down all the way back here. Al told me you knew everything that was going on. True? I know enough. Try me. Did you know he confessed to Mill's murder? Confessed? Al Bingham, I don't believe it, Lieutenant. He's my friend, too. I wouldn't kid about a thing like that. You mean he, he confessed just out of the blue? Not quite. He tripped over a record. One Mills was dictating when he was shot. Oh. Well, he hated Mills for years. But why would he wait till now? That's an answer we came to you for. I'll give you an answer, a simple one. Al Bingham didn't do it. Oh, for Pete's sake. I'm with you. All I want is the fact to substantiate it. Now listen, John Weston, I've known Al and you for a good long time. And confession or not, Al would no more commit a murder than you would. You might as well lock me up. I had more of a reason to do it than Al did. You? Steve, Professor Meisner, Al, and now you. Everybody's confessing to this case. That's all I need is another confession. For that matter, I thought you were one of Mill's fans. Well, this is sort of a twist. One of those sob sister stories, you might say. I had a 15-year crush that didn't work out, so maybe I killed him. Confused? Another thing, John. You know your men wouldn't have overlooked that mud. If Al didn't do it, why did he frame himself? Then back it up with an ironclad alibi. Obviously, he's protecting Steve. Why? I don't know all the answers, so they were friends. Not good enough. They're no Damon and Pythias. I agree, it just doesn't make sense. It sure doesn't. Al's been a complete loner all his life. Oh, no, Lieutenant. He had a wife once. What's wrong? Oh, nothing to worry about, Steve. Just a couple general things to be cleared out. Maybe you can shed some light on this, Steve. Al's motive for hating Mills goes back a long time. Oh, you mean uh, Mills taking the column away from him? That's right. Why did Al wait such a long time, then pick last night to kill him? I don't know. Well, maybe he took advantage of your threats against him and used you as a patsy. Al? That's crazy. Is it? How good a friend of yours is he, Steve? How long have you known him? Since I was 18. How'd you meet? He just showed up one day. My parents had been killed in an accident the night before. Al said he was an old friend of theirs and just took over for me. You've been close ever since? Every time I got in a bind, I'd, I'd look up and there'd be Al to bail me out. Oh, believe me, he, he wouldn't use me for a patsy. Not Al. Well, have you got to admit it looks like the professor? You can't call it identification. One face in the crowd that far away. Yeah. You know, this Dr. Deal is a real cautious fella. No records, no pictures, except this. You'd be cautious, too, with half the world out here. Yes, I might even change my name to Professor Meisner and hide out in a small college like Benton. Come in. Hi, Lieutenant. Mr. Maris? Steve? Lieutenant, I've come to see Al. I I've got to see him. Well, Al doesn't want to see anybody, Steve. Well, why not? Well, that's his business. This isn't a zoo, as you well know. Look, I can't force it. Well, well could you persuade him, Mr. Maris? How'd you make out, huh? I don't know for sure. I know this. Al is scared to death that we're going to uncover something. Excuse me. Weston. Yeah, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Maiden name, Dorothy Pringle. Yeah. Are you sure about that? Okay, thanks. Al Bingham left his wife just seven months before his son was born. Two years later, she married a man by the name of Barry Larkin. Steve is Al's son. So now we have a man who knew his son was about to commit a murder and got there ahead of him. No. The man who was scared to death his son did commit a murder. The son he ran out on. A man desperate to make it up to that son. And smart enough to frame himself. A man who knows every line in the face of murder. You're right, Herb. Al could have done it, and he almost did. You realize, of course, this puts us right back where we started. Not quite, Herb. 
Listen, I'm tired of Nina now. I got this tape back from the DA's office. And I'm going to go over it when I get back, over and over and over again, till I find out something in that tape that identifies Al as the murderer. And uh, this may identify Professor Meisner after all. Well, just the man I want. Can I see Al? Uh, he's not seeing anybody ever. Uh, his idea or yours? Uh, his, I'm sorry. Hey, you two men seem in an awful hurry for a man who've just gotten a full confession. We just kicked Al's confession into a cocked hat. Excuse us, sir. Well, this time we'll dig deep. In spite of the professor's hard luck story, Oates's pretty face, or Steve's boyish smile, this well, time... That's not all, John. We'll have to look at all of Mill's people. Oh, that suits me. Wait a minute. Herb, what are you doing? Now, one newspaper reporter knew enough to make himself look guilty. There's no reason it wouldn't work in reverse. Well, what are we going back for? Well, I have to check on something. Now's the time. It'll only take a minute. Come to roost at last at Benton College. Well, can't blame a reporter for prying. Well, I meant to see you. You didn't seem very interested. Well, John, after all, good reporter develops a poker face. Well, what happened to your poker face when Al confessed? Well, that was a shock. I, I know Al so well. You know murder well, too, Everell. Well, of course I do. A reporter of my experience. <laughs> Only a reporter with experience would be able to rig evidence. Like yourself. I suppose that's true. If there was any reason to. Wait. Wait a minute. What did you do just then? I took a cigarette. No, no, no. It was something else. John. The sound. The sound. You closed your purse. So? Yes. You wanted to hear this tape, didn't you, Everett? Listen. Dr. Herman Deal and uh, Professor Meisner are alike in every... on for years and years. And then finally, six months ago, he, he just told me it was all over. There'd been a lot of other girls. They didn't worry me. And then, and then this Ilsa, he made a complete fool of himself over this girl and didn't want him the way I did. And then on top of that, he did everything he could to get me fired. I, I just couldn't take it all. I, I shot him. 